All right, so just a couple more things um, that we need to do. Uh, it calls for the typical Navy, uh, the Navy fire, fire, the flame resistant flashlight. So I'm just using the, the, the normal DC uh, helmet light or the Pelican light. But what I did do is they normally come with a strap a lot, and a lot, of, a lot of the flashlights that the sailors are gonna carry with them have their own lanyard on them. I actually wanna remove that for two reasons. One, it becomes a flashlight and a lanyard, which is two, two pieces that you're carrying in, but also it has these hard, uh, hard plastic pieces. And again, you wanna minimize anything that could, if it does fall in to the MRG, could actually do damage. And of course, those hard plastic pieces certainly can. So I removed that lanyard and I used one of our, the, the, the standard, the about three foot long tether. Um, all of our tools, all of our equipment, we're gonna tether it to the MRC casing, um, or I'm sorry, the MRG casing and we'll, we'll use that in order to, to keep it because we don't have belt loops and we're not, it's definitely not gonna go in with a belt. Uh, personal items, glasses, belts, um, wedding ring, right? For those, for those sailors who, who can't or are not willing to take off their wedding ring, then you need to find someone else to, to do the MRG inspection. You can't go in there, especially with, with metal, especially on your hands. So that's gotta be removed, that's, that's, that's that's a, that's a must have. Here's our visitor's badge, wallet, cell phone, keys, all of that. Either leave it, leave it in your berthing, leave it in your stateroom, or uh, you know do some sort of some sort of containment. In this case, we're going to put it all in a plastic Ziploc bag, um, and that allows it all to stay together. Uh, that way, it's in the engineering space if you need it, especially things like glasses. If you need them, uh, you can come out of the containment area and grab those. Uh, if you if you do need that, um, I believe the MRC calls for uh, E5 or above to, to be the custodian here. We're going to use one of the the staff members. Uh, he's also so he'll be the custodian for all of that. He's also maintaining the log. And again, every person who goes in has to have a has to have a log sheet. So this is mine. Uh, so as we go through, everything that we're going to take into the secured area is listed on here. One turning gear key, uh, the MRG access key, um, and if we wanted to get specific, there's, there's three keys and a, and a name placard on that. Uh, two pieces of plexiglass, uh, my flashlight, uh, my MRC, and I'm, I'm carrying a storyboard, our, our, our script. So I have seven pieces of paper with me that I'll be taking in. Um, the gloves, we have two pair taken in four rags, then we have the ratchet, the socket, and the open end wrench. Um, so you can see we have the quantity going in, and we'll do an inventory coming out, uh, and those obviously have to match verbatim. They ha you have to, whatever you take into the secure area has to come back out, and you have to verify it. Uh, as chief engineer, I would never allow the MR MRG to be open without me present in the immediate area. Um, and in most cases, I'm doing the unlocking and locking myself because I want to be the first eyes on um, and I want to be the last eyes to, to see that open MRG and verify that it's open. Um, but that's, that's up to the command. Uh, it can't be opened without the chief engineer's permission and I strongly recommend the chief engineer be present at all times during an open MRG inspection. Um, so I'm taped up. Uh, my pocket is not empty. I do have a microphone in my pocket, um, and that's, of course, that's an exception that we're making that we've got permission to make uh, based on the fact that we're trying to do this recording and do this, this, this training video. Everything else uh, is, is empty and taped up, and all of our tools will be, will be lanyard to the outside of the MRG casing. We've got our inventory sheet. We've got all the tools we need. We've got the lanyards ready to go. Everybody's demetalized and taped that are going to be inside the inside the container or the inside the secure area. Uh, so with that, we're ready to rope off the area, get inside to the secure area in front of the access cover, and we'll commence opening that cover. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up uh, with the inventory, the final inventory. We've pulled everything off of the MRG. Um, we have it all piled here, but now we have to mark it against the, the inventory so that we know that everything that went into the containment area has, has been brought out. Uh, so a couple, you know, we've untied some of them, but when we pull these all out, I want to leave the string on them, the lanyard on them, 
so that we know that we also got the lanyard because we want to keep account for that. We didn't, we didn't document that we brought in seven pieces of, of twine, but we know that everything had a, had a piece of string. So we'll, so just like, uh, just like danger tags, you always, it's, it's not enough just to have the tag. You want to make sure you didn't leave that string on there. Same thing with this. You want to make sure that all that string came off, not only for housekeeping, but obviously the, uh, the more important need to make sure that nothing, none of the, the, the twine fell into the MRG. All right, so of course we've got the key. When we went in, there were two keys and a label plus the ring and the thread. Uh, again, if, if you wanted to, I certainly could have run, that run the lanyard through all the keys to make sure, uh, but we didn't this time. I probably would if I did it again. Um, so there's, there's the key and the thread. And our facilitator here, uh, they're gonna, he's marking it off on the inventory list, so by the time we go through everything, he should have a, a tick mark by, by everything. So we have two pieces of, of plexiglass, and again, this just allows for observation without getting covered with lube oil, uh, which was unsuccessful in the second attempt. So there's one piece, there's the second piece. The duct tape didn't go in with us, that's just kind of sitting here. Uh, so I brought in seven pieces of paper, that was the MRC, three, three pages of MRC and four pages of what we call our storyboard or my script that I was supposed to follow along with that I didn't. So we've got three pages of MRC and four pages of script. So that's our seven pieces of paper that we brought in. And of course, my strings are getting tangled up here. Okay, I think at this point, I'll just cut them. We've got a pair of scissors around here somewhere, so I'll just use that, and it'll be easier to just cut them off. So this is the, my, uh, my flashlight, the, 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 the flame-resistant flashlight, flame-proof flashlight, the, um, and the lanyard, which I'm just gonna cut. So flashlight with lanyard. And again, there's no sense in putting your tools away covered in oil. So this is the end wrench with lanyard. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off. Again, that heavy duty riggers tape or duct tape, whatever you're using, it makes it harder but it's pretty cheap insurance against this twine slipping off, or especially when they're oily like that, it wouldn't be very hard to lose this tool if, if that hadn't been duct taped on there. So end wrench and associated lanyard. So originally we had two pairs of, two, two pairs of gloves. There were senior chiefs, authorized mil spec, eight mil gloves, one of the, one pair of those, and then I had the drugstore steel from medical uh, cheap ones. All right. In the course of this, I replaced them once, and then I tore one glove. So really, we have our, our original was two pair, but now we have the two pair plus a pair and a half for the three gloves I swapped out. So I should expect to have five of these and two of these. So here's the two of those. Here's one, two three, four, five of the smaller ones. Ratchet and socket. Again, having the, the lanyard through the socket makes it harder to go on and off, but it's the only way you can unless you have some sort of whole machine somewhere in that socket, which I've never seen before. So again, you want to tape that to make sure it stays in place. So socket and lanyard. That should mark everything off of our inventory sheet. Anything left is just socket. Okay, so the only thing left that's not, that, that's not accounted for is the camera equipment and we'll inventory that uh, off camera certainly um, after, after we wrap up here.